Uh, cheers, guys. So yeah, um, thanks a lot, Hey, for uh, having us back. Well, me back. Um, so I'm here to talk to you today. I, I make games for a living. And uh, most people seem to think that this is how we make games. We have an idea. Uh, we do some magic programming, like the guy from Jurassic Park. Uh, then the money comes in. This is the classic game development thing. And then we just go around in a circle and become really, really rich. And that's my talk. Good night. Uh, no, obviously, that isn't how it works at all. So this is my talk called Making the Game. Oh, yeah, and uh, just to let you know, uh, there's some screen flashes in some of the videos, and I just thought I'd let you all know. So this is me. Uh, this is my little, my little daughter here. I just thought I'd just show that in case I yawn on stage so you just know why I'm so tired. Um, I'm Rob Allison. That's my Twitter handle if you want to follow me. I co-own Laser Dog Games Limited. Uh, I'm a programmer, and I also compose the music for our games. Uh, this is Laser Dog. That's me there. And this is Simon, who is over there somewhere. Everyone look at Simon. Way. Uh, we're an in indie game development studio. Uh, we're a two-man team. Uh, we are based in Leeds. Uh, we primarily make mobile games. And that's, oh yeah, this is an uh, extra bonus like band photo we did, uh, which is now gone, because I clicked the button. <laughs> it was great if you saw it. Um, so I just thought I'd quickly go through the work we've made so far. The first game we made was called Puck. Uh, it was like an action puzzler, um, first game we ever made. Uh, we were absolutely thrilled. It got Editor's Choice in Germany on the uh, Apple App Store. Uh, after that was released, uh, we used the money we got from that to make a loan, uh, which was an endless runner. Uh, we made that one part-time as well. Simon and I still had our regular jobs going. Um, when that was released, we got a worldwide App Store feature, which absolutely blew us away. It was incredible, and it actually allowed us to go full-time. We quit our jobs on this game, and this is the game we presented last time we were here. And last time we were here, after that game came out, I used this GIF, which is actually Carlton dancing very happily. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, we went on to make Hopico, which is a zero-G platformer. It was retro-inspired. All the music for the soundtrack, which had like 20 tracks, was composed entirely on a Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, Apple gave us this massive worldwide feature. It gave, they gave us Edit's Choice. Um, it did really well, and later on we released, uh, we ported that game into a completely di different engine, which wasn't actually a really a port. We actually completely rebuilt it from scratch on uh, Xbox One, PS4, and we released it on Steam, which is Mac and PC. And while we were porting that game, we were under quite a lot of uh, stress, uh, financially and also just time. And we decided to make this game to make our stress even greater. Um, it's an action tennis arcade game called Pocketball, or PKT Ball, as quite a lot of Americans call it. It's quite clearly Pocketball. Um, it was the very first freemium game we made. So up until this point, we have always charged for our games. Um, but the market changed in such a great way, which we could not sustain a living selling our games anymore. So we made a this as a freemium game, which we actually called Cleanium, which is really cheesy, but Basically, <clears throat> we made it free, but we didn't want to rip people off with like coins and all these horrible things that quite a lot of big companies do. Um, again, we got worldwide ed editor's choice for this game, which absolutely blew us away. Um, we got three million downloads uh, uh, worldwide. Um, we joke that it took us nine months to make, but it actually took us five months to make. But there was definitely nine months work in there. We worked like every evening and weekend forever. So it was crazy busy that time. And at the very end of last year, Apple featured in the top 10 games of 2016, which was such an achievement for us. We were really pleased. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> so after the stress of all, <laughs> all of that, um, my wife was heavily pregnant at this point with our first child. She's watching on live stream if she can say hi, Jen. Um, <laughs> We decided to make a really tiny game because I knew I was going to have some time off in a bit. So we made this game called Don't Grind, which is about little cute fruits and little objects with cute little eyes, which you bounce up and down. Keep them up with cute objects, I called it. And it's all about finding the fun. It was the first ever game we made where it had a theme tune that I wrote and sang. And I can't sing, so it was pretty, pretty special. 
And it actually had a Christmas single, because it was around about that time of year. And it took three months to make. It actually took three weeks to make, but then there was translations, the, edit, um, the App Store stuff, and all that kind of thing. So it was a really, really quick game. And when we released it, Apple picked it up again, and we were just, like, couldn't believe it. And it had 4.5 million downloads. So it was actually... <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it took us three months to make, and it was actually our most successful game to date, which is brilliant, but also a little bit annoying that we spend so long on all those other games. So this brings me on to what, we're here, what I'm here to talk about tonight. So what is our next big adventure? So it's a dance game. Simon is the artist in our company, and he came up with this wonderful artwork for this rhythm-based game, which is about dancing like Guitar Hero, but dancing. You have these cute little robots. And we came up with this idea where you could, take, you could use your phone camera, take a picture of your own face in various like, emotions and stuff, and put that on the character. Um, I made this system where I could write music um, in like, computer software like, uh, called Logic Pro, uh, export it as MIDI, which is like a music data, basically, uh, convert it into JSON, and then import that directly into my game engine, and then I could sync events to the individual notes and beats, and everything would be perfectly in sync so you could dance in time with the music. It was all very complicated. Then we've got Adam, who was just talking before here, who's our beta, uh, one of our beta testers, and we were taking pictures of his face. This is him dancing very well to Simon's animations. You see, he looks very, very graceful there. And this is in Game Engine, and he's losing here. <laughs> he's very cool. And many months later, we actually couldn't get this game to work. We just couldn't get it to work at all. We had a lot of fun making it, and we couldn't get it unique enough. The thing is, there's so many games out there. There are so many, and we couldn't get it to feel any different to any other rhythm-based games. We had these ideas which we just couldn't pull off. So we just chucked it in the bin. So that's three months' work, just gone. And that's really painful when you're paying your own wages yourself, and you know the, the pot of money we had is, is small, and it doesn't last very long. So our next big adventure, cat balls. Cat balls. Cat balls. <laughs> cat balls. <laughs> Simon came up with this idea. Um, well, I, th I think Simon came up with the idea. It was very, very good, and he came up with this wonderful artwork. These uh, cats, which are balls, not cat balls, but cats, which are balls. Uh, I came up with this idea, um, this system, sorry, to render 3D objects in our 2D engine uh, using just simple maths. Uh, to position all the individual elements of the cats uh, and rotate them and scale them so it looks like a real 3D cat ball. Um, this is an early game demo. Some very similar, mu uh, familiar music there. So you basically just run around as a cat ball. Uh, Simon did some really great artwork. This is with, with the home screen. This is some uh, like gameplay. Um, uh, many months later, so this is another three months down the road, we were like, yeah, this is really hard. We, we can't get it to control very well on a touchscreen, because on a touchscreen, there's no buttons, and we need up, down, left, right, and we, we had these great ideas, and we were finding it really hard to pull off. And we were at a, um, an event Apple were holding at their headquarters in London, and one of the guys that worked there in the game department was like, so what are you guys working on next? And we replied with, Cat balls. <laughs> and he was like, um, cat balls. Uh, and on the, <laughs> on the train home, we were, we were like, yeah, we're stuck here. We're really stuck. We're six months in, and we don't have a game to go on. It's, it's really, really challenging. And I made this sketch on the train. This is an idea for a new game. This is actually the game I'm here to talk about today. You're on the top of a mountain. You jump off and you fly as far as you can, which is a distance. And the most important thing about this game, the, the mechanic, is you have all these different ways of flying. And it's such a small game, it's so simple. We got really, really excited about it. We threw cat balls in the bin, because it's cat balls, isn't it? Uh, this is the prototype I built on the train, because um, it's a train from London, it was very boring. So as you see, the ball, which would be the character, can fly through the air using various different flying methods. 
And it, it felt really fun. You know, obviously the graphics are very basic. It's just black and white, but um, the actual game was there. So Ava Airborne was born, pun intended, I guess. Uh, Simon quickly did this artwork, because he, he just knocks this artwork out very quickly. He's very, very good at it. Uh, this is the character, Ava. She dreams of being a pilot. She builds flying contraptions in her little shed. And she jumps off a cliff and tries to survive as long as she can. Um, our good friend Fran, who is over there, Adam mentioned early on, um, did this wonderful logo for us. And she sent over this document, uh, which for some reason included these two guys at the bottom, which you might recognize. <laughs> so that slide's missing. That's worrying. So, <laughs> the internet maybe didn't work earlier on. So the game basics is you jump off the mountain, you fly through a course as, uh, as far as you can. There's balloons and hoops and stuff you have to fly through. And just see how far you can get. So we started working on the animation straight away. And this is how a regular animation sheet is built up. Uh, this is from a, a game called Braid. And as you see, every single frame of animation is drawn out individually. And there's a lot of uh, repeated artwork there. Um, so say it's 30 frames per second, that's obviously 30 frames per second of animation. So you have to, you have to draw every single one. And with our game, uh, Ava has like a glider, a rocket, a jetpack, all these different things. That's a lot of stuff to pack in. And we're working on a phone, which is very limited. So we couldn't really go for this approach. Because as you see, there's so much repeated stuff there. If we did that, the assets would be absolutely huge. So we work with something we call a, like an asset sheet. So every single part of Ava is split up. And we use a program called Spine, which is a really, 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 really great program. Um, and you can put all these bits together. And Simon does a great job of animating these. So this is Ava obviously falling down. So the assets that we actually use are incredibly small. And there's so many advantages of doing it this way, because it's uh, frame rate independent. So we can slow it down, we can speed her up. And all the animations can be merged together smoothly. On the, on, on the fly, we can change her skin, so we can change her outfit without changing many assets at all. So it's very cool. So this slide is also missing. I'm just going to skip. Just one second, I've got. Uh, oh, yeah, so I had to, um, to get Ava's world together, I had to then build a camera system to show off this big world that she had. It's, uh, there's a lot of depth to it. So, one second. So, this is a green dot. So as you can see, this is a, uh, a green dot. And it's moving around the screen. So the engine we use is called Corona. It's a 2D engine. And there's no kind of camera system built in. And we want this big like 3D camera, basically, which shows the sea going off into the distance. Um, so what you have to do is to make a proper camera system is you have to, can you even see that? Can you see the white dots on that? Shit. <laughs> well, basically, I, from scratch, I coded this 3D camera system, which shows up. Oh, that's great. So yeah, it's a 3D camera system in a 2D engine. And when you put it all into motion, if you can just barely see that, it gives the illusion of this depth which we really, really needed in, the, in our game. So I'll just stop that now. So on to the level generation of Ava. Well, as I said, she jumps off the cliff, then she has to fly as far as she can. So my initial idea was to in code, procedurally generate a path for her to follow. And then in, in that path, dot objects around so she has to collect some and avoid some. The problem with this approach was we couldn't get the design intelligent enough so that 
we basically wanted to hand draw what she flew through, but with completely random code, we, we found things blocked her, and it was, it was just a bit awkward. So I turned to this uh, piece of software, which we'd used before in other projects, called Tiled, and it's a free piece of software, and I drew a, I made a brush set, which you can get, uh, uh, you can include in this, and we, we had the option of hand drawing levels, which was absolutely amazing for us. So we drew these in like little chunks, and um, then we could rank each of these little chunks we made by difficulty, so we know how hard they are. And that gave us the option of having both authored content and random content. So this then, my code, my random code I had before, could get these hand-drawn chunks that we made and position them in the level exactly how we wanted them. And we have made it so every single day you play, it's a different level, but it's stuff we've made, so we have control over it, which works really, really well. So this is just a visual representation of what uh, my game system ended up having to make. So every single dot on the screen is like a game object. It's like a balloon in the sky that she has to pop or a hoop she has to fly through. And the, the white rectangle that's moving around is the, the player's viewpoint. So it's the, what you see on the phone. So as you see, there's like hundreds of game objects everywhere. This, this level could go on forever. It could just go on forever. And the phone's only so big and it's only so powerful. So it's a massive waste of resources to have all these objects when you can't even see them. So what I did is I... Can you see that they're in a grid? They're in a grid. You have to just trust me on this. I put all these objects in a grid. I divided them up so I could tell where every, everything was at any time. And then only activate the individual grids when I needed them, which massively improves performance. And also, when these objects are disappearing, they're not being deleted. They're actually being just hidden and deactivated. And then they can be reused somewhere else. So everything's always getting recycled so you don't have to make things on the fly every time. So then this brings us on to probably my favorite thing about making games is the music. I love making the music. Uh, as you see from my desk, I make a lot of electronic music. Uh, most of our games features electronic music. Well, this game just seems so much softer uh, and I've been dying to make some orchestral music. So it just seemed like a really great fit. Uh, fit. We wanted a sense of adventure, freedom to explore, the, to feel a scale, and also to bring the fun to this game. So I started to turn in, I wanted to see what I could get as musical inspiration. So I turned to this guy. This is John Williams. Yeah, exactly. I, obviously, I can do John Williams' work. No, not really. But I thought it was a good, a good place to turn. So S Superman for the second time tonight. Uh, E.T. This, this is something I made. So that was an early version of Ava's theme. So I was going for the really superhero feel. Then I went uh, more orchestral, so I put every, sorry, I'm gonna have to go back. <laughs> uh, so I, I added more orchestral things like strings and all, all, all that kind of thing. And yeah, it's kind of like I still have no idea what Simon said at the end of that. Uh, so yeah, I started going down this more orchestral route, uh, and it was really fit in the game. Um, but I carried on looking for inspiration. This is a film called Tangle, which I'm a massive fan of. I don't, I don't mind saying that. Uh, it's a Disney film. And the music in that is really great. It, it just is. Uh, and then I watched Moana for the first time like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's by a little company called Disney. You should check it out. Um, and that's also really great. So I started going down a little bit of a different direction. And this is um, just like a minute-long video of the gameplay music that I've written recently. 
which I think really fits the feel of the game. And I've put some of Simon's artwork to, to the back of it so you have something to look at while it's on. Thank you. So I've had, I've had a lot of fun making the music for the game. Um, so, so far in this development process, we, we released it, uh, the very first image I showed of Ava, we actually released that on Twitter. And we're quite secretive about our game development process for some reason. Um, so we decided to make a trailer, like a teaser trailer. Uh, Simon drew this very nice sketch. And it's the, the idea is, uh, to announce the game, show the graphic style, and show the feeling, and I've put some basic music to it. So the, the, the idea of this teaser, tra teaser trailer that we released is it's Ava sitting on the beach, looking out to the horizon of the sea. She's got her hang glider smashed into the, sea, into the beach, sorry, and she's just looking out there just with the wind blowing through her hair, and she's been like, oh, this is a great adventure we're on, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so Simon got animating. I, play this really, really quick uh, piece of the on the piano, uh, just some chords, basically, and put some very basic strings to it. And we put this trailer together, which I'm going to play now. Thanks. So this brings me on to the last segment of uh, my slideshow. I'm just going to show you through a quick demo of the game. So again, I'm going to have to do this really awkward thing where I do things in silence while you sit there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, one second. Where's the menu bar? I've got to move my mouse up here. Open recent. Ava. There we go. So this is Ava, Ava Airborne. So this is Ava Airborne. So I'm just going to crouch down to this. So this is Ava on the edge of a cliff. And then she has flight. So this is her very basic flight tool, which is a glider. plummet to the floor there. So that's, that's her very basic flight tool. But as I showed on the very, very first slide about this game, the, tra the sketch I drew on the, on the train, she has very, a, a lot of things she flies with. So here we go. So she has all these things to pick from, to choose from. So this is a, uh, a watermelon umbrella. So here she goes. Again, I'm just going to let her plummet to her death. So that's her watermelon umbrella. Just finding the mouse. <laughs> but 
There's a lot of like different feeling things as well. So if I go further on, she has a bee suit that she wears sometimes. And you have to flap. Just gonna let her put it down there again. And we go even wackier with, with our contraptions that we have for Ava. So who here has ever wanted to fly on a office chair powered by a fire extinguisher? That's everyone raising their hands. Yes, I thought so. So this is actually way more graceful than you might think. Now you know what it's like to fly in an office. And this is one that featured um, the inspiration for this one, Light Boots, comes from the Disney film The Incredibles, so it's a Pixar film, Disney Pixar. Samuel L. Jackson's character, Frozone. She does a swan dive and then creates her own path using her boots. The last one I'll show you is a bit of a ridiculous contraption. It's, it's a tuba. And um, this comes from the trailer of um, a Christopher Nolan film called Inception, uh, which Hans Zimmer did the music for. And it's a very famous trailer because it, it started this whole, fra whole manic thing of every trailer having in them. I, I hope people know what I'm doing there rather than just doing that noise every trailer started doing it, so I thought it'd be really hilarious to write this really sinister music, and every time you try fly with this thing, it does the infamous noise, so here we go. The music needs to be really loud for this one. So it starts all off lovely. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so thank you very, very much for having me. I have to say, honestly, about 15 slides went in. <laughs> so I had to ad-lib quite a lot of that. But thank you so much for having me. Uh, oh, it's laser dog.